Hey, if you're a senior golfer and you're not quite hitting the ball as far down the fairway as you used to, then this video is definitely going to be for you because I'm going to discuss what I think is the best way for senior golfers to get the ball down the fairway further without swinging harder. So don't go away. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit longer and straighter drives down the fairway. Just be longer and straighter in general. If you're on the same journey, especially if you're a senior golfer and you need those extra yards to enjoy the game more, then please uh, consider hitting the subscribe button, like if you like this video at the end, and leave a comment or if you have any questions. And don't forget in the uh, I've left a link in the description below to my free ebook, 50 Tips for Hitting Your Longest Drives Ever. Um, you can grab that. I think it'll be beneficial and get you a little bit further down the fairway. So what is the best swing for senior golfers? Well, I'm starting to experience it. I'm going to be turning 50 in a few more days. I'm going to, I, I'm already experiencing what I know some of you um, are experiencing and that's you wake up and you're, you're stiff and you're sore and you don't feel like you can move. So the ideal for you, swing for you is going to be a, a swing that gets the ball way out there but really doesn't feel like you're making a, a, a huge effort, especially with the body and the torso. You may not be able to turn as far as you used to. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how to make a swing and a setup that promotes a very high draw. A high draw is gonna give you lots of carry distance from the launch angle, but the spin rate is gonna be fairly low, so when it comes down, it's also gonna bounce like a super ball really gets you out there for consistent distance without feeling like you're having to strain or try very hard. One of my favorite students, his name is Walt, he's now 72 years old, he was able to use this technique to hit a drive out to 267 yards. Um, he consistently hits the ball over 250 and um, he, you know, he was never a great golfer um, up until recently. Now he's maybe a high 80s golfer, but you know, this is not somebody who's played his whole life and he's like a par golfer or anything who used to hit the ball a mile. No, he had a horrible slice. He couldn't hit the ball over 180 yards and now he's hitting the ball over 250 using this exact technique I'm going to show you. All right, so first let's make sure that you have the right weapon in your hand. Uh, make sure that you have enough loft um, in this case, I'm going to be using a 10 and a half degree loft because I'm going to gear my swing down to a speed that might be a little more familiar to the people watching. So I'm not going to do any showing off. I'm going to be swinging maybe 80, 85, 90 miles an hour. So I'm going to be using a 10 and a half degree, but that could it could vary depending on several factors. So you really want to get fitted and get an adjustable driver that you can make the little adjustments and get the proper ball flight. I also want you to make sure that you're dropping out of that old stiff shaft. If you're not getting into the mid 90s to 100 miles an hour with your speed anymore, drop down to a regular or almost to a senior flex if you have to, because this is all part of the formula I want to show you. These softer shafts are going to allow more kick to get the ball kicking up in the air higher, get more carry, and get it down the fairway in the air further. That's yardage we can count on every day, no matter what the conditions are. All right, so now that we have a good driver in hand that's gonna fit what we're trying to do with this swing, I wanna show you a modification to the setup that's gonna bias you towards the shot pattern we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set up normal which would mean square hips and shoulders to my feet. And what I want you to do is I want you to even bias that further. So I'm gonna turn my hips and shoulders even closed to the target line. So here's hips and shoulders closed. Feels like I'm pointing way out to the right. So what this is gonna do is gonna promote more of an inside out strike. I don't even want a path that's straight 
at this point. If I'm really trying to get it out there with the high draw and be very efficient, I will actually want to swing several degrees from the inside. So we're not at the point where we're hitting at 300 yards here to where having your path biased a little bit too far into out is going to make a huge difference in your accuracy. So it's going to be just fine if you're hitting the ball 200, 220, 230 and you want to get it out there further. Let's bias your path inside out by overdoing the hips and shoulders and we're actually going to get them closed this way. Now the reason we're going to be doing this and overdoing the shoulders and hips and sending them out to right field is because it's going to promote already you'll feel very natural taking the ball, the club away to the inside and returning it to the inside. So I want you to feel like when you're coming down into the ball that your shoulders and hips still stay, stay shut and close to the target line off to the right. And that's going to allow you to hit from the inside. And with that overly inside out path is also going to come a lot more upward strike. So I'm going to hit a couple for you. We're going to take a look at the TrackMan stats. What I'm trying to do is hit several degrees from the inside and several degrees up on the ball so I can get that super high launch angle. Let me give it a shot. That's a good one. Let's check it out. All right, so this is uh, stats from the TrackMan, which is sitting right here off camera. I'm going to post them up here in the upper corner. Um, I had a swing speed there of uh, 91 miles an hour and change. I was able to hit the ball. Uh, I was able to hit up on the ball. Wow, uh, 10 degrees up on the ball with a path of six degrees inside to out. So that's really taking it to the extreme. And that's OK if you're not hitting it out there you know, super far, then you've got a little bit of wiggle room to have your path not quite be uh, that straight. Um, the ball ended up going 254 yards out of 91 miles an hour, which is really, really a good use of energy. Um, you know, I didn't even get all of it, which is <laughs> it's funny, and I'll tell you why I didn't get all of it. I, I hit um, every ball I hit in that series, I hit low on the face, and here's why, is with my added angle of attack, and I'm coming in from this angle, the club is bottoming out behind the ball more, further. And so I actually would need a higher tee. I'm actually coming up over the top of the ball and only catching the, the uh, top half of the ball and the bottom of the club. And so I didn't get, you know, full ball speed out of it. So I, I would imagine I probably could have gone uh, five or 10 yards further at this same speed. Um, but anyway, I had 254 yards out of 91 miles an hour. That's really, really efficient. It, it was a high draw just as planned. Um, and I'm going to show you one more trick to get that because a lot of you out there, you tend to hit a slice or are unable to hit a draw. So I've got one more trick to show you. What I'm going to do is hit a couple more. Uh, uh, a little slower speed, just in case there's some guys out there that you're only hitting 80s, 85 miles an hour. So let me see if I can gear it down again. Hit a couple more. All right, I'm going to gear down. Same technique. Got the ball way forward. Overturning, over biasing my shoulders to the right. Good high rope hook looping down with hardly any spin. So I really came down a lot on this one. Um, show you on the screen just in case you're uh, you're really uh, challenged for your speed. Here's one on the low end, uh, only 75 miles an hour, and yet I was able to hit the ball 210 yards. How about that? 
Um, I hit nine degrees up on the ball, eight degrees from the inside. So I was able to create a very high launch angle, uh, but have a very low rate of spin. So the ball was hit high, but when it came down, it bounces like a knuckleball and gets down the fairway a lot further. Um, really good way of doing things if you don't have a lot of club speed and you don't want to strain too much doing that. Okay, now for the super, super crucial move, and that is we've got to get the club face closed to this inside out path to make the ball draw. So otherwise we would just hit the ball out to right field and it would stay out there or even worse and in some cases of um, people out there that, that tend to slice the ball, um, you'll push it and slice it and it, wow, we're really in a world of hurt. So if my path on these was eight degrees in to out this way, I would need a club face uh, about halfway back to the target again or four degrees to the right. So that would be make the club face closed enough to the path to where the ball will curve back right to the center again. So you're gonna have to make a move here with your wrists and forearms that you might not be accustomed to. It's gonna be easier, however, when you come on this path. So I've got my speed whoosh here and I want to sh just show you a couple of points that are gonna help you get that club face over so you can hit that big draw. Number one, we need to be free. Can't hold it. So I want you to have quick hands. Notice I'm not taking it back very far. I'm not following through very far. So I'm kind of modeling uh, someone who has real limited range of motion. If you're older and you just don't have that big shoulder turn anymore, I want you to be free and fast with the hands instead. So the hands are going to get really supple. And you can here I can get a substantial whoosh out of that real short swing. Um, the second thing you're gonna notice is my right forearm is going to very freely pass over the top of the folding left. So the left is gonna fold, the right arm is gonna go fully over the top this way. So it's gonna get on top of the folding left arm this way from this angle. It looks like this. And we're going to do that right from the top of the swing. There's not going to be any delay. So you'll just take it back and swoosh right forearm over left. Not a big back swing if you don't have one. And quick hands, swoosh right over left. That's going to help not only get the ball turning over right to left, but it's really going to have a big effect on your club head speed with fast hands and it's going to bring your spin rate down so that you get that knuckleball effect bouncing down the fairway once it lands. All right, let me give it one more hit. I'm going to be shooting for, oh, 83 to 85 miles an hour. I know that's a really common speed for people who might be watching this video. Again, I'm going to be ball way forward in the stance, biased to right field for more of an inside out approach. Freely swoosh and cross over the forearms. And I get a nice flat rope hook down the left side of the fairway there. Yeah, this is the best one of the bunch because I really caught this in the sweet spot. You're gonna see what the potential here is I was exactly at 85 miles per hour, as you see up in the corner, um, a carry of 203 yards and a roll, <laughs> boy, it sure rolled out, 241 yards. So because I only had 16, 1700 RPMs of spin from that crossover snapping move, the ball really motored down the fairway, you know, like a, a, a rabbit being chased. Uh, 85 miles an hour to go 241. If we check that out on the TrackMan chart here for distance, you'll see that I'm eclipsing big time, eclipsing their, uh, their mark, or at least coming very close to as far as a golf ball can be hit at a certain speed. Uh, my path there was eight into out, and my angle of attack was also eight degrees up. So we're taking it to the extreme, but this is how you're gonna get more for less, especially if you don't have a lot of range of motion, you can just 
rip it out there with that high draw, um, get that distance that you've been missing in your game, start reaching those greens in regulation and putting for birdies again. Hey, so again, thanks so much for watching. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for this beautiful scenery. Um, and if I don't see you in the next video, I hope to see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take care.